Hey everyone, welcome back to the next episode. Hang on, do that again. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Unlocking Doors podcast. My name is Corey Mills and I'm here with my co-host, Michelle Castle. Today, we are talking about the goal of home ownership in 2024. If that's you, you're gonna love this episode. We're talking about buyer preparedness. Mm. Michelle, this is what you specialize in, mm -hmm. is helping people get from renting or maybe if Even they're already owners and they're looking to buy their next mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. this is what you specialize in. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the steps that owner or that anyone should take mm -hmm. to get from renting or, you know, just getting ready to buy that next house. Yeah. I, th I really looking at your finances, mm -hmm. I think are really important. You know, whether you're buying this with somebody or you're buying it by yourself, you really need to get, I mean, this is your one chance to really set yourself up for future success mm -hmm. financially. So really thinking of it that way means getting all of your finances out, like looking at your entire financial picture and how does home ownership fit in that? Whether it's your first home or you're going to, you know, sell your home and purchase a new one. So that's number one, like get that all out in the open for yourself, like mm -hmm. pull all of your documents and really look at where am I financially? Yeah. I think it's a good idea for everybody to be monitoring their credit. So you have, you should have a pretty good idea what's on your credit report and what the consumer scores are. They're going to be different than what they would be on a mortgage, right. but still it's part of just really looking and seeing where do I stand? Right. So once somebody kind of takes a, a self reflection on their finances, mm -hmm. should they be, you know, going and looking at properties? Should they be talking to a mortgage lender? Should they mm -hmm. be coming up with a plan and mm -hmm. just getting an idea? You should never go shopping unless <laughs> you know how much money you have. Okay, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. That was <laughs> a trick question. Um, so first step in my mind is reaching out to a mortgage consultant such mm -hmm. as yourself who mm -hmm. can talk about, you know, here's what your closing costs are going to be. Do mm -hmm. you need, whenever we start looking at properties, mm -hmm. do you need help with closing costs from the seller? Mm -hmm. um, here's your budget. Here's mm -hmm. how much you qualify for. Mm -hmm. And really just talking through all those different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the first step. I, like you said, I've had buyers call me and they're like, we want to go look mm -hmm. at a house. Um, and I'm like, well, have you gotten pre-approved? And they're like, money's not an issue. And usually when they say that, uh -huh. it is a huge issue and yeah. they don't Money's qualify. not an issue because they don't want to see any like. Yeah. It's like, we're yeah. not going to talk to a lender because we don't want to hear them say, <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's not that, that you'll say no, it's here's what you need to do right. so that you can be ready when the time comes. Right. Yeah. It's never a no. It's not. No, not right now. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, absolutely. Before you go looking for a house, because I mean, like seriously, it, the difference in what a payment would be on a $350,000 house has changed drastically just in the last six months. It's changed again just in the last two weeks. Right. So looking at a house in, in different price ranges doesn't mean that you're going to be comfortable with the payment. And people underestimate how much closing costs are. I mean, everything has gone up in the last couple of years, including closing costs. Because and of homeowner's insurance, number one. I mean, that's a huge... That's a biggie. Whenever you're looking at your prepaid escrow account, mm -hmm. golly. Yeah, that, your homeowner's insurance has gone up tremendously. Property taxes have gone up. Mm -hmm. um, the All the third-party fees have gone up. The cost of an interest rate, you know, just five years ago or 10 years ago, if if you hadn't been in the market in five to 10 years... You weren't paying discount points back then. Right. Well, now you can't get a rate without a discount point. And most lenders, whenever you look at rates online, they're assuming two to three discount points. And for those of uh, listeners that aren't don't know where to calculate that, you basically take the loan amount times 2%, times 3%, and that's the cost of the rate. So there's a lot of fees that weren't there before mm -hmm. if you bought a house before. And if you've never bought a home, you're really shocked that, the cost of owning a home. Yeah. Now we're also, you and I are really good at helping people figure out where to go to get the money to come up with, to buy a house. Right. So I don't want to scare you, but we do want to set realistic expectations. Right. Whenever, when people are starting the process, I think it's very important. I mean, the last thing I want to do is get to two weeks before closing when they get their initial loan estimate and they're like, 
or I mean, they're getting that they're, whenever they get the contract. You get that up front, but still, but still, things can change. We don't want buyers to be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this mm-hmm. is something I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I think being extremely prepared up front and mm-hmm. talking about your, or looking mm-hmm. at your finances, mm-hmm. talking with the mortgage lender about what you realistic. qualify for, what's realistic. And then I think making, and and knowing exactly where your credit is, I think is, yeah. is number three. And whenever it comes to working with a mortgage lender, um, one thing just in my experience of selling real estate mm-hmm. is don't go with the cheapest rate. Don't go with the <laughs> least amount of closing costs don't go with some online lender who's based out of Phoenix or California. And we're in North Texas, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't go with that person because whenever you're Mm -hmm. a week from closing Mm -hmm. and there's an issue, Mm -hmm. you won't hear from them. Whenever Mm -hmm. it comes Mm -hmm. to working with lenders, Mm -hmm. get a recommendation from your realtor or from Mm -hmm. a family member who's closed Mm -hmm. with a lender uh, Mm -hmm. that had a great experience. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's local, somebody Mm -hmm. who has local connections Mm -hmm. to appraisers, to realtors, to just... Mm -hmm everything because the last thing you want to do is have the stress of moving Mm -hmm. and then just all this stuff Mm -hmm. going on. And and Mm -hmm. then you can't get in touch with your lender and they're, Mm -hmm. you know, they've got their head buried in the sand because they don't really have to hold themselves accountable because they hide behind their big online marketing budget. Yeah. Uh, So uh, I mean, in uh, from a hyper local standpoint, I mean, if you were selling a house in El Paso, would you represent someone in El Paso when you don't even know the market? You're licensed in Texas. Yeah. I I wouldn't do it. No, No. I would. I don't even, I mean, if it's more than like two, like I think the furthest I've driven is like two hours. And, um, and once again, it's, I mean, that's kind of, you have to know that market. You have to know those people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, anything outside of that, I'm referring it out. So all yeah. that to say is, you know, when you're picking your lender, mm-hmm. make sure it's somebody that you can trust mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. make sure that it's, that you've looked into either their online reviews mm-hmm. or you've gotten a personal referral or mm-hmm. a couple referrals. Mm-hmm. I think next is picking the agent that you want to work with. Absolutely. And that can be, um, I mean, there's an agent, they're like Baptist preachers. There's one on every corner. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> So, I mean, you've got, you've got your pick of, uh, you've got your pick of realtors whenever it comes mm-hmm. to that, but make sure that it's also somebody that you can trust, somebody that's local, somebody who someone's available, somebody who's available. Um, and when I say that, I mean, it, same, same thing that you experience on the lending side yeah. when you need them the most, they need to be available. Right. Exactly. Not just, you know, are they available, but are they really available when you need them? Now it doesn't mean at midnight when you're having a meltdown. Right. But, you know, you, you need someone responsive and that I'm really shocked at how many times that is an issue. So make sure again, check references, Mm -hmm. read reviews, ask around right, and keep it local. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think really from there, I mean, your realtor and your lender are going to work hand in hand with a Mm -hmm. strategy to help Mm -hmm. you get into the property that you need. Mm -hmm. Whenever I'm working with a buyer, And it's somebody that you have them Mm pre-approved before we go look at properties. I already know what kind of closing costs we need to ask for, Mm -hmm. what kind of property condition we need to Mm -hmm. look out for based Mm -hmm. on the loan type, Mm -hmm. Um, just all different kinds Mm -hmm. of things that set us up for success. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, another thing is just really coming up with your personal list of must haves in that next Mm -hmm. home Mm -hmm. and knowing what is a deal breaker and what Mm -hmm. is something that you can live with. And I think, you know, bump that up to further up in the list. And I'll tell you why I say that. I, you get emotional, you walk in a house and you totally forget about the things that, that, that are the must haves. How I, I'm away from home a lot working. And so when I come home, I want to experience my home in, in a, certain way. There's two mistakes that I made on the last house that we purchased. One was a half bath. That was really important to me. It was, it was really important to my husband. So when you have guests over that half bath really mattered, not some, you know, he, we didn't want anybody going into our bathroom and we didn't want anybody going into the bathroom that my daughter was using. Um, Totally forgot about that when we picked the house. The other thing that really mattered, and this sounds silly, but watching sunsets was just something that we enjoyed doing together. Mm -hmm. And 
again, I mean, we could have chosen a home. There were several homes that we were looking at that had a beautiful view for a sunset, not the house we picked because we got too emotionally wrapped up in making that decision. So I think um, those things don't seem like anything major, but they really are whenever that's how you want to experience your home. And so I think making that list before you get emotionally involved in the decision-making process, I think is important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then from there, I mean, that's really, we're talking about buyer preparedness. Mm -hmm. I think outside of that, then you're kind of in the action and Mm -hmm. that's where Mm -hmm. you're really leaning on your lender, your realtor, Mm -hmm. inspector, Mm -hmm. um, appraisers, and Mm -hmm. just their professional opinions on what, Mm -hmm. you know, what they do and what they think. So, Mm -hmm. um, if you are, thinking about becoming a homeowner in 2024, maybe you're going to trade up or trade down or get into investing in 2024. And your goal is to buy another property. Be sure and reach out to us. We'd love to help you out. Mm -hmm. Michelle will get you the money and I'll help you find the property Mm -hmm. and, uh, be sure and like this video, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, thumbs up, and we will catch you guys on the next episode of unlocking doors.